put this in on the rod side. Of course I line it up on this side first, the one that has the indention, and just slide it in there, make sure it's even. Seems to be good. And then do the same thing on the bearing on the uh, <clears throat> rod cap. And what you don't want to do is put lube on the back side. That'll cause you to spin a bearing. You definitely do not want to do that. So you just put them in there pretty dry. And then you can go ahead and put lube on each side. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these off camera. Uh, one thing I did run into actually removing this one is the cap did not want to come off very easily. So I just kind of had to rock it back and forth. It's not glued on there. There's no special trick. You just kind of got to rock it back and forth to get it off. So in case you encounter that, that's how you can get past that. All right, so the next step in assembly is going to be putting your rod and piston assemblies into the block. Um, as you can see, I've got three pistons here. Um, one piston is currently in the block already, and this one is off by itself because I fucked it up. Um, and here's why I'm going to explain what I learned from fucking it up. So this is the sheet they sent me, mainly sent, with my rods. Um, it kind of gives you a chart of also what bolts they send with the kits. So using this, you have to figure out what bolts you have. Uh, you will need your calipers and your eyeballs. So you get your calipers for the bolt diameter. You have to measure this. It's not what the head is. It's not that the fact you know that a 7 16th socket fits the top, which is what I thought. Um, but instead, it is that. that. That measurement right there, that'll tell you your bolt diameter which of course is exactly what it is, bolt diameter. Your UHL is going to be the length of your bolt minus the head. That'll give you your UHL. The material, it should have it stamped on the head. I don't know if I'll get it good enough, but it'll have it stamped on the head. Let's see, ARP 2000. So for me, it turns out I have the 42 350s, uh, and they are supposed to be torqued to 55 to 65 foot-pounds. I thought I had uh, one of these others that had 7 16 which was 90 to 100. Needless to say, I over-torqued the bolts and I stretched them. Um, they were stretched, they were stretched a pretty good bit, so needless to say I bought new ones. Second mistake I made uh, was when installing the piston into the block. I did not tighten down the piston ring compressor all the way, and as I was tapping it in, it cracked one of the rings. Luckily, I noticed it and removed it. So, I'm waiting on rings, uh, one more set of rings, and of course, I'm going to have to spend three years filing that one fucking ring, I'm sure. Anyways, so I'm going to move on to piston number two because I can go ahead and do number two, number three, and then I'll have to wait on number four. So you want to go ahead and line up your rings again, make sure they're good and proper. They're clocked properly, I believe is the terminology. Okay, so once I've double checked, make sure the rings are in the proper location, I went ahead and put some engine oil on the piston ring compressor. Just gonna slide that over and start cranking it down. And then for this little cheap AutoZone one, you kind of have to adjust it a little bit to make sure it's square in there. One more click. There we go. All right, good and tight. You want to have them rings compressed. Next, we'll move over to the block, and I'll show you what we're doing next. All right. Then you want to go ahead and check and make sure that your valves are uh, that your valve reliefs are located properly. Your pistons oriented properly for this one. Um, the larger I have larger intake valves than the exhaust valves, so the larger intake valve reliefs on the pistons will go towards the front. Um, and of course I've already put some engine oil in this and also in the cylinder wall.
Next, I'm just gonna take the rubber end of my hammer and just lightly tap it down in there. Um, another good thing to do is actually to keep some pressure down on this so that the piston rings don't pop out of the bottom because they will most definitely do that. And if you feel it kind of hold up or get stuck at any point and it doesn't want to keep going, don't bash on it. You will break a piston ring. I did that um, and I was not too happy with it. All right, so in this next part, I'm just going to show you real quick how to use plastic gauge because it is uh, part of what you're supposed to be doing when you're assembling your engine and is using plastic gauge to check your oil clearances for your bearings. Um, this is just a little thing of plastic gauge. It's got a little teeny piece of plastic in there that basically gets smushed and how flat it gets smushed this basically tells you your clearances. So you want to have that clean of oil, your crankshaft um, clean of oil, same thing with your bearing, clean of oil. Again, you want to make sure your numbers line up with your numbers. Yep, you're going to need a flashlight for that. Yep, all right, there we go. I like to give it a little tap just to kind of get it seated. Of course, with your bolts, ARP, they say do not use assembly lube or any other kind of molly lube. They say use 30 weight oil and not that piece of fuzz. And you're going to want to alternate as you're tightening them down. Uh, and these, uh, these are going to be torqued to 60 foot pounds. And of course, you do not want the crankshaft to rotate during this. So, one tip I suggest is you stand at the back or the front of your engine and not to the side. Because if you're torquing to the side, it's going to want to rotate. Um, another tip I forgot to say is when you're putting your plastic gauge, make sure you put it right in the center. That's one, and there's two. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and remove it now that it's been torqued to spec. Then we're going to remove the rod cap, hopefully. Ah. It's hard to remove it evenly. There we go. All right, and then you're going to hold your piece of plastic gauge on there and see how fat it is. And that looks like, let's see, yep, that appears to be a point zero zero one of an inch. And that is within specifications. So we're done with that fun part. Okay, so the torque specs for this particular one. Shit. Okay, I'm just going to guide the rod up through the block. Just stuck my little screwdriver in the hole. 
just to kind of guide it up and tapping it up from the bottom. Sounds like it's seated, and then we'll go ahead and put the cap on. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Nope, guess not. Anyways. Alright, so when you're putting your caps on, you want to make sure your numbers match up. There'll be numbers printed on this, and there'll also be numbers printed on the rod. You want the numbers on this side with the numbers on the same side. Again, go ahead and grease up your, your bearing with your assembly lube, your bolts. Uh, for this particular one, they said do not use assembly lube or molly lube. They say use 30 weight oil. Right, I say finger tighten until it sits seats pretty good uh, and you just want to alternate on each side as you tighten it down so that it seats evenly and then as I stated before it's a uh, 60 foot-pounds for these There we go, good to go. 